Thank you, everybody. My name is Michelle Rosado, and I am the program manager for the Connecticut SAT School Day, and I work at the Connecticut Department of Education. Um, I'm joined with by my colleagues, um, Deirdre Ducharme and Abe Christ. Um, everyone. Abe, you want to say hi? Hi. Yeah. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we wanted to just kick off the year to give you a little high-level um, overview of what the digital test is going to look like for 2022. And um, I know many of you have... Um, probably all of you are familiar with NGSS or administering Smarter Balance. And so there's a lot of similarities with this, but there's some differences as well. And so we're really lucky to have um, a great team at the College Board that we're working with. Um, Keisha Smith and Adrian Kupper are on the line, um, and Adrian's going to take you through the presentation. Um, and we also have Alan Bernstein, who works in with us in the state, and John Fallon. Um, and I just realized that I think Michael Sabatos from our office is also on the line. So I just want to bring, he helps us, he does all the, um, the data file submissions. So anyway, um, you can see my little Stella, my Stella Yorkie picture on this slide right here. And we have a picture of, um, Adrian's cat too. So, and yes, this is being recorded and it will be posted to the State Department of Education website. Um, and right, the slides are also included in the file section. So you should be able to download those. Um, you are not able to unmute and we're gonna ask that you actually type your questions into the question box. And hopefully I will be able to get to that once everybody starts. I'm still admitting people. So um, there we go. So yeah. So anyway, I'm going to turn it over to you, Adrian. Awesome. Thank you, Michelle. Hi, everybody. It's nice to be back with all of you again this year. Um, we are, I think, I think Michelle and I can safely make a commitment that anytime we do a presentation, we'll have cats and dogs featured. So make it a little more exciting. Um, but um, we are excited to, you know, we're always excited to work with Connecticut educators, but I think we're super excited for this year because with your transition to working and, and to working with us to doing digital testing for the SAT. Um, I think you guys are going to have a great experience and I think you're going to find that there are a lot of benefits of giving the SAT digitally. Um, the least of which is that you will not have to uh, reach out to us to hunt down boxes of test books. So uh, that's always fun. Um, so uh, we will get started here. We're going to cover a couple things um, that um, we're going to, today I'm going to give you a high level overview of of digital administration of the SAT. Um, it's, we're not gonna go into a lots and lots and lots of detail because at this point, I think you're not gonna be able to get into the systems yet and things like that. So we're not gonna cover things in great detail, but we are gonna talk about some of the things that I think you, you need to know and probably want to know about our digital testing for the year. And then, uh, and then we're gonna be able to take your questions um, you know, at the end to be able to answer anything you may, you, you may wanna know more about. So we will get started here. And um, the first thing, just to make sure we're all aware of the test dates. Um, so the test dates, there's uh, a set of primary test dates, uh, March 23rd through 25th and March 29th and 30th. Um, so there's a five day testing window. Um, so you can give the SAT to your students. If you, if you want to give it all to them on one day, you can do that. Or if you want to break it up over the course of five days, you can do that as well, or three days or whatever works for you. But the goal is to provide you with flexibility to administer the test to your students. So with digital testing, you do have a testing window. Um, the accommodated testing window for students who appear on the NAR um, you'll and, 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 and are, are able to test in the window um, that runs from March 23rd through April 5th. And then the makeup test dates, there is there is also a, a window of testing for the makeup test dates. So you can the makeup test dates are April 26th through 28th. And so again, if you, you can choose to test all of your makeup tested testing students on one day, or you can use the multiple dates in the window. Uh, but I think, like I said, I think one of the real benefits of the uh, the digital test is that it does provide you the opportunity to have some flexibility and to uh, to use the test dates as works best for you. So a couple of things I'm going to call out as we're getting started, and then we're going to go into some of these things in more detail in a little bit. 
So uh, we deliver the digital SAT in partnership with Cambium Assessments, um, which uh, or CAI, which um, which I believe is what you guys also use for some of your other assessments in Connecticut. Um, so as as Michelle had said, there is some similarities to what and quite a few similarities actually to uh, to how you administer the digital SAT in using the uh, the Cambium systems. There are a few things that are a little bit different. And we'll talk about those. Um, because our test obviously is different than the other tests that you're giving, so there are some differences about how how you interact. Um, for so so schools that are doing digital testing, so all of you guys in Connecticut, um, you need all students must test digitally uh, for the assessment. So all students will take the digital assessment, except for students that have an accommodation that requires paper and pencil testing. And so if you have a student that requires paper and pencil testing as an accommodation, we can send you a paper test, paper test book and an and answer sheet for that for that student or those students to use. And again, as we talked about, you can test over a window with digital testing. And so schools can choose to administer everything on one day or spread it out over the window, use all five days, use three days, whatever works for you. Um, the um, the uh, all students though who are taking the test on the same day. So if you're gonna if you have 100 students and you're gonna break them up over the five days, you're gonna have 20 students test the day. All students who are testing uh, on the same day have to test at the same time, right? So you can't you can't administer the test to 10 students at 9 a.m. and then the test to the other 10 students that day at like 2 p.m. You have to test them at the same time. Now that's within, a, there's a little bit of flexibility there. I think you may recall for last year, we rolled out some staggered testing options so that you could you could, you could allow for social distancing if needed or whatnot. So um, so there are some, uh, there there's a little, so you can start a group at let's say 9 a.m. and then another group at 9.20 and another group at 9.40 to get some staggering happening, but all students really should be testing at about the same time. And then um, score reports are made available in the same time frame as those um, for students that test with paper pencil. Um, and in addition to the standard rules for testing, and you'll prob you're probably seeing this in the establishment survey that you're filling out, uh, in addition to the standard rules for testing that you're used to having, having a coordinator and an SSD coordinator, um, you also do need to assign a technology coordinator at your school. And this person's accountable for all the technology setup tasks for digital testing. Um, and we collect that information so that we can be in touch with them as well. So in terms of how, how does it work? How do you, how do you know, how do you find kids in Tide for, uh, for, for your digital testing? Uh, how, does this, how does this happen? So uh, the state will provide a file upload with, uh, with your student information in it for your school. And um, the state you know, pulls that information from PSIS and they will provide a file upload to us. That typically happens in the January timeframe. As we nail down those dates, we'll provide more specifics to you. Um, but typically in the mid-January timeframe, we, um, the state will provide uh, a file to us. We then, um, we then provide the file to, uh, the, the, it basically the file flows through and, and we'll, go into, uh, we'll go into Tide. So all the students that were in that file that were associated with your school will then be visible and tied for your test coordinator. So, um, so we, uh, it's similar if you think about in previous years where the state would provide a file upload and that's how we knew to send tests to you. Same idea here, the state provides a file upload to us and that's how we know who to, who to set up in, uh, in tied for your, um, for your, for your school. Uh, one point here, though, it is important, um, as, as I mentioned, uh, the establishment survey is, is out there, um, and it is important for you to complete the establishment survey, make sure that your school's completed that, um, because that's actually truly the first step in the process, is we know what schools are need to be established for testing, and that's how we know even who needs to be able to get access to anything. So that's a really important step. Um, as uh, so, CAI the CAI systems. Um, we uh, there, there are there are kind of multiple applications that are used, and some of these will be familiar to you if you're doing other testing in Connecticut. Test Information Distribution Engine or Tide. So that's what the test coordinator the test coordinators use throughout the testing process, pre-test kind of setup stuff, to on test day, and then any post day test day stuff. Um, there's the test administrator. Oops, sorry about. That. There's the uh, test administrator interface. 
proctors use the TA interface to administer the test. And then there's a secure browser, and that's what the students use uh, to take the test. And so, um, uh, because you guys are already using CAI for other testing, a couple, a couple things we do need to call out. And like I said, there's a lot of things that are super similar that you're going to be like, I know how to do this. And then there are a few things that are different. So uh, for schools that are already using the CAI system uh, and the secure browser to deliver other tests, um, depending on the operating system of the student devices, you will need to install one of the applications below um, on the screen here. You'll see there's the CB Secure Browser, and this is used for devices that are running Windows or Mac OS. So it doesn't replace your state testing browser. So you can have that downloaded on student devices. Um, you just need to also download the CB Secure Browser on student devices, and that's the browser they would use to take the SAT school day. Um, so, like I said, it doesn't replace the state testing browser. You can have both installed on student devices at the same time. There's also a secure test browser, and this is the application if your school is going to use Chromebooks or iPads. So, if your school is already using CI for the assessments, you um, you you are you may already have the secure testing browser on Chromebooks and iPads. So, in that case, you only need to change the organization and the assessment settings in the secure test browser before students can access the test. You don't have to download something different. You already have that on your Chromebooks and iPads. Um, you just need to, uh, you'll just need to change the organization and assessment settings. So we'll cover this again in more detail with screenshots and everything as we get closer, but we just wanted to give you a little sense of this is one of the differences. The other thing, uh, so for test coordinators and proctors, again, you're gonna use the same, uh, the same applications. You're going to use Tide and you're going to use um, you're going to use uh, the TA interface for proctors. Um, you're going to have separate URLs, though, for uh, for accessing Tide and the, T, the TA interface. So there's a URL that you use for NGSS and your other assessments, and then there's a URL that you'll use for College Board assessments. So if you log into the one that you use for NGSS, for example, you're not going to see the kids for the College Board assessments. You have to log into the College Board URL to see the kids for the College Board assessments. Um, the uh, if if testing if you if you are testing the same students, let's say you have students that you're testing for another assessment as well as for the digital SAT, you're going to see them separately in the, in these systems. So you would see you know you would see kids the information you need for those kids testing for NGSS, for example, in that system, and kids testing SAT school day in that system. So that's the biggest difference to be aware of, I think. The, functionally, it is, it is fairly similar. There's just obvious differences because the test is, is structured differently. But the big thing to know is you have to log into College Board Tide and College Board TA interface. And I'll show you in a second, well, I'll show right here, how you access College Board Tide and College Board, um, College Board uh, TA interface. So we have uh, a digital testing portal set up, and you can see the, the web address on the screen. Um, the digital testing portal that we have is basically the gateway to all of our digital testing information. So, uh, so you'll see on the on the front page, you'll, you'll have the ability to sign into Tide right from the landing page of our of our testing portal. Um, you'll be able to uh, access uh, practice tests and things all from this location. Um, technical specifications are all in the digital testing portal. That's kind of your go-to place for College Board assessments. But like I said, so when you have to go to the College Board Tide, you're going to go to the digital testing um, portal, and then you can sign right into Tide from there, or you can sign right into TA interface, or or you know, or things from there. So. Um, we also have a uh, practice. Uh, on, on, as I mentioned, we, on the digital testing portal, we do have uh, practice sites that you can go into so that everybody involved in the test can kind of practice and see and, and have, have the experience of, of taking the, the SAT or administering the SAT in a practice setting beforehand so that you're used to it. Um, so you are welcome to go. Uh, you could go today if you wanted to and log into our digital testing portal and access the practice site if you wanted to see what it looks like, if you wanted to see how it's different. I'm sorry, my uh, my keyboard's super sensitive today. Um, 
So, uh, but like I said, you can log in right now to the practice sites uh, if you want to just get a sense of what it looks like. If you want to share information with your proctors, with anything, you can do that and see that right now. There's also an interactive proctor simulation on the uh, on the uh, digital testing portal with the with the practice information, so that you can actually kind of your proctors can be walked through exactly what to do on test day. Um, so uh, that exists uh, and is something. Again, it's it's up there right now, but you'll have it. Um, you'll have it. Uh, uh, we'll cover it and show you things from it when we get closer to the test. But if you wanted to see it now, it's right there. Um, we do recommend that as you're thinking about your plans for testing, that you plan to have a time for uh, for staff and students to go in and use the practice site just so that nobody is confused on test day and, it's, and test day is a much smoother experience for them. Um, so it's something to think about. And um, on the digital testing portal, there are lots of directions, detailed directions on how to use the practice site and, and, and share that with folks. So let's talk a little bit about technical readiness. Um, so for technical, uh, the for test devices, um, a few things to know, and like I said, all of this is up on the digital testing portal, as well as a lot more stuff that your tech coordinators will want to know. But um, you'll need to make sure that the devices you're using meet the system requirements and tech specifications that are outlined. There's a step-by-step -step guide that's on the digital testing portal, and your, tech, and your tech folks can take a look at that and just make sure your devices meet those specifications. Um, so schools, uh, Schools will need to install the secure browser, uh, whichever one, whether you're using Chromebooks and iPads or whether you're using Mac OS or, or Windows, you will need to be able to install the secure browser on uh, test taking devices. As I said before, we allow desktops, laptops, iPads, and Chromebooks. Um, so um, if you have a mix of those, you can use a mix of those, that's fine. Um, but uh, just to know, if you're using iPads, um, iPads have to have at least a 9.7 inch display. Uh, Apple iPads must be fourth generation or higher, and you can't use iPad minis. That's mostly for the display of the test. Um, the, all devices will need to connect to the, uh, to the internet. Um, it can be wired connection or wireless connection. That doesn't matter, but all devices have to be able to connect to the internet. Devices must be school owned. Now it's okay if, a, if, if, your, if your students take them home, right? If, if, if you issue every kid a laptop and they take it back and forth to school, that's fine. But the devices themselves must be school owned. And that's because your school will be responsible for installing the browsers and doing all that kind of stuff. Devices must also maintain a charge for at least five hours or have access to a reliable power source. So um, you don't have to have all your kids plugged in while they're while they're taking the test. You can have if kids are using a laptop, you can have them unplugged, but they do have to be able to the, the laptops do need to be able to maintain a charge for at least five hours. And then um, each testing room must have a dedicated device that the proctor will use uh, to be able to access the TA, interfa the TA interface. So the kids in the room will all need their own devices, and the proctor in the room will also need his or her own device. And the setting, uh, students testing with an approved assistive technology device should pre-test the device in the secure browser using the student digital test preview mode before test day, because you want to make sure that the uh, that any assistive technology that's being used um, is, uh, is 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 working uh, is working well. And if you need to do any troubleshooting, uh, you can get that done ahead of time. And uh, so, so I'm not going to go through this slide in detail. Uh, your tech folks will will be the ones who who want this information. Um, but we do have a lot, we do have information about the kind of bandwidth that's needed, um, both during startup and during actually during testing, um, and uh, and other information about testing devices that your tech folks will need to know. We have a network diagnostic tool on our digital testing portal that your tech folks can use. Uh, to be able to make sure that your network can support the digital testing. Um, something, it's something really, you want to do that, you know, significantly in advance to make sure that, that, that you've got what's, what's needed. And if you're having a problem or having an issue, you can reach out to us and we can support you. So we also, um, we support all of the accommodations that, that students need 
uh, and that we support in paper pencil testing. We have digital equivalents for those accommodations. Um, the um, we have some features that are universal tools that all students can access, and then there are some that require uh, the test coordinator or the SSD coordinator to adjust in time before test day for students that have specific accommodations. So there are certain things that are, that are uh, universal tools. Calculator, we have an embedded calculator in the platform. Um, students can use calculators outside of the uh, outside of the uh, computer if they want to, but there is an embedded calculator in the platform. Context menu, expand button, highlighter, line focus, mark for review, navigation buttons, a notes field, um, a questions drop down list, uh, reference and math formula sheet, a strike through option eliminator, a student clock. There's, a, there's an embedded student clock as well so that, you, so that students can keep track of their time and see that on their own screen. And there's also zoom in and zoom out. Um, there are also then uh, other other things that the t the coordinator SSD coordinator test coordinator can set for students with specific accommodations for contrast English learner supports four function calculator so we have that as an accommodation for the non calculator section um, mouse pointer uh, there are some non embedded accommodations that. Uh, that, that can't be a supported in digital testing that we would need to um, support kind of outside of digital testing. Permissive mode, streamlined mode, test time and breaks, text to speech and assistive technology. And then there is additional zoom font size. So there universally all kids can zoom in and zoom out um, to up to a certain point. And then beyond that point, um, it needs to be set as an accommodation um, and it will kind of alter the, uh, the, the, set, the layout of the test. We also recommend that for any students that have accommodations that you make sure that they are definitely using the digital test preview in advance to see how those accommodations work in uh, digital testing, just so everybody's most comfortable. Um, as I mentioned, so there is the test experience preview opportunity. Um, you can kind of go through and see, and especially for students, all students really, for them to see what are the universal tools that are available to them in the testing, uh, in, in the digital testing. Um, navigation buttons, as I said, there's the embedded student clock up in the corner. Um, there are other test tools and context menu tools. Um, so again, in the digital, in, in the test preview, you can see those, your, your, your students can see those before testing actually takes place. And then, uh, as I said, this is a high level overview. We're going to, we're going to see each other, you know, a couple times over the next several months. I uh, will provide you kind of increasingly more details, but I do want to let you know that you will receive test day training. Um, so and that, that, that will be in depth about everything you need to do, every step you need to take, every the way every little part of the system functions. Um, and so with that, we'll be sending out and this will be this will be about six weeks prior to test day. You will get that kind of super in-depth training. We'll send we'll send you an email that will have access information so you can see that training. There's going to be a digital coordinator training as well as a training that will walk you through how Tide works for the College Board. There's also a training that we have that is available that you can share with proctors. So, uh, so you can make sure your proctors and all of all of these involve kind of interactive simulations in the training so that you have the opportunity to kind of test things out and you have the opportunity to uh, to click through and uh, and experience the things we'll be asking you to do for test day. We also do have uh, we also do have a training that coordinators can take for paper pencil testing in the event you do have students that have a paper pencil accommodation. So um, you're not required to take that unless you have a student that needs to actually receive the, past, the test in paper pencil format. So we have lots more of information coming your way, a lot more detailed information. As we get into the spring, especially, you'll get a lot more details when you'll be able to have access to systems and start doing setup activities. So that is the, um, that is the end of, of of the slides that I've prepared. Uh, I know I, I have seen that we have a lot of questions coming in through chat, so we'll be able to address those. Um, but that, that, like I said, we just wanted to give you some of that high level stuff so you just knew how CAI works with the College Board. Yeah, we have a bunch of questions and I'm sorry about the slides. I can't figure out why some of you can't see them or download them. But rest assured, I will be emailing you um, 
the link to the slides as well as a link to where the recording is posted. So if you want to share it with your colleagues who couldn't join, that's great. And that um, and the website, I'll also send you the link for our Connecticut SAT School Day website where we post um, all of the resources on that page as well. So um, and this will be the first of many trainings that we'll offer to you besides the very in-depth one that Adrian mentioned um, that comes about six weeks prior just so we can get everybody ready. Um, so Adrian, I'll start with, I went way back to the beginning of the chat. Um, there was a question about are the fall and spring PSATs also digital? So um, the PSAT 8-9 in the fall is available digitally if you wanted to administer that way, you would you would have to order that digitally. Um, in the spring, the PSAT 10 and the PSAT 8.9 are also available digitally. I'm sorry, the PSAT 8.9, the PSAT 10 is not, just the PSAT 8.9 is available digitally in the spring. I'm sorry about that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, another question is, can one student test on mul multiple days or does he, she have to finish in one testing session? I mean, I guess they mean one day. Yeah, so unless a student is approved for an accommodation that allows for testing over multiple days, that student has to complete the testing in one day. Okay, um, someone asked if we've sent out any training emails to technology coordinators yet, and I'll just answer this one. Um, the establishment survey email, which I sent out last week to um, test coordinators that were the people that I had on file from last year, um, that's where we're collecting the information on who's going to serve as the technology coordinator for your building. So once we get that database completed and it, with all the contact information, we can then reach out to the technology coordinators to offer them uh, information and training. And of course, we will always copy um, the test coordinator on any kind of emails that go out to technology coordinators or and or SSD coordinators. Did I leave anything out, Adrian? No. Okay. Someone asked, I don't know if this is a question or CB secure browser is the College Board secure browser, not Chromebook secure browser. Right, yeah. CB secure browser is College Board secure browser. Will the logins for College Board and the CAI use the same credentials as NGSS? No, they will be different. Uh, and so what will happen is after uh, after we receive the file upload from uh, from uh, CSDE in the January timeframe, after after you've had kids that are loaded into Tide, you will get an email that provides you with your login credentials for the College Board Tide uh, system, and then you use those credentials to uh, to log into the College Board Tide system. Thanks. I know that's a big that's a big one. Um, let's see. Um, this is a comment about the says a lot of districts have shut the College Board secure browser down for students because of security concerns of students being able to access websites past the built in filters. Um, that was from Seth in Newington, so maybe that. Is that referring to AP or was that referring to digital PSAT? I'm not sure. Um, but you can send an email to me, Seth, with that, and I can um, ask Adrian. Yeah, we can. Uh, we yeah, send an email with with kind of the specifics, and then we'll be able to follow up with with our tech folks and get you information. Um, and the browser, where where can they get the browser? Did you, so did the, you talk about that? Yeah, let me go. I'm going to go back to that slide though, so you can see that. Uh, you can you can access basically everything you need to access for digital testing here at our digital testing portal. So it's digitaltesting.collegeboard.org. Thanks, and that's like for anyone that's using it, not just the state of Connecticut for the SAT school day, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. 
Okay, um, tech, there's a question about the technology coordinator. Do you want the technology coordinator to be the district lead responsible for pushing out the browser or a person on site on test day? So, I would say, if you're if you're if your district lead, I would say you know what I would say actually. Uh, the person on site on test day, because we'll we'll kind of be providing information to them along the way. Um, if if that you know if that person's different, right? So you have somebody else at the district, and then you have a person on site on test day. Uh, you'll want to make sure that the person on site on test day is just sharing any information they receive with the district lead. But I think you're going to need the person on site on test day because they'll need um, they'll need information to be able to support students best actually on those test days. Okay. There's a question from Jennifer Webster, and I'm not really understanding what it is. So maybe you can send me an email because I don't really understand what you mean. If a student has the accommodation of 50% extended time or what do we call it now, time and a half, mm -hmm. can they still complete their test digitally? Yes. All of, the, all of those timing accommodations are available digitally. So uh, what will happen is you submit your accommodation uh, request, or if it's already in there, you have a student with their accommodation approved in SSD online. For those students, you will set then the test settings and tide that's appropriate. So you'll choose the, the, you'll choose the correct timing setting for that student, and they can, take that, uh, they can take that test digitally. They will continue to test in one day, as they currently do, as they did in paper pencil, time and a half uh, tested digitally or tested uh, in one day. Um, time, uh, double time will take place over two days. Um, but yeah, those, those test settings are just set and tied and they can, they can move forward and test digitally. Um, will the PSAT and MSQT be digital next fall? Uh, I do not believe it will be. Um, why was the decision made to jump to a digital version for the SAT when the students will be taking a paper slash pencil PSAT? Won't this affect test validity? Um, we made the decision at the department a few years ago that we were gonna move to digital. All the other assessments that students take are done digitally and um, it's much more, uh, in terms of the load of worrying about getting test materials and counting everything, um, it's a lot easier in terms of the administration to do it digitally. And there's also been many um, test studies about taking it both paper, pencil versus digital. And maybe um, Adrian, you can jump in on this one because I know we did look at different studies that show. Yes, we have done a number of validity studies uh, and there are not concerns about the difference between a student taking the test in a paper pencil format and the students taking the test digitally. Um, we can provide those uh, that information about those those studies. Um, I don't know if John, or, I'm not sure if John or, or Alan are on the phone. Uh, they they may have more information about specifically about those studies. But we can we can provide it. We can provide that kind of validity information for you guys to look at. Sure, I can include it in the email that I send out. There's a couple people that had specific. Questions for me, like, um, I don't think you have my email. I didn't receive the, e the email with the survey you're talking about. Um, if you could send me an email, that would be probably the easiest thing. My email was on the first, second slide and the last slide, but it's my first name, Michelle, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E -L -L -E dot Rosado, R-O-S-A-D-O at C-T dot gov. And I'll pop that into the chat to. So send me an email if you're missing something, if you have questions, or you want to be included on a list when I send things out and you're not. But of course, we are building our new list based on the establishment survey that's gone out now to collect names about test coordinator, SSD coordinator, technology coordinator, and school building principal. Okay, Jennifer asks, where can we find the survey to report who is the testing coordinator? Um, Jennifer, I emailed that to the coordinator I had on file as of last year. I know it might have changed in some buildings, um, and I asked people to forward it along. But again, send me an email, and I will get you the link to that survey. I'm also going to put it into the student assessment news this week um, with the link to that as well. We ask that just one person per building complete the survey. Okay. 
So Seth's question was about the College Board browser. Seth, if you could just send me an email, we can um, get back to you about that. Seth, are you uh, just, I may be able to actually answer this for you right now. Are you referring to the College Board browser that you used for AP testing? Um, because if you are, uh, the College Board browser that was used for AP testing is different than the College Board browser that's used for, uh, for SAT testing. Um, and so if that's, Okay, so you're saying no, that's not the one you're concerned about. Okay, um, then yeah, so we'll we'll follow up with you uh, with you afterwards. Um, so yeah, we can we can get more information for him. Okay, so there's a question from Aaron about the survey to report the tech coordinator. The survey to report the tech coordinator is the establishment survey. You have to report the test coordinator, the SSD coordinator the tech coordinator, the principal, you also have to verify your school's mailing address. It was all in the same survey. So there's one link to the survey. So it sounds like maybe you didn't get it or you have questions, just send me an email. Okay, so is there a code or can anyone log into the TA interface on College Board? Uh, I believe there, I believe, uh, I believe you provide, you as a test coordinator provide uh, Kind of login credentials to your to your proctors once you're establishing them in the system um but we can get that specific line uh information for you uh if you want to go in and look at the the previews of those things though right if you want to see the practice sites and the practice browsers on the digital testing portal right now you don't need any any credentials to to see the the practice sites yeah there's some good tutorials on there that you can go through when you have extra time, which I know most of you don't have extra time, but when you have a few minutes. Um, okay, so here's another email. Can a student with an IEP choose to take the test on paper just because, or is there a set of criteria that needs to be reviewed first? So the fact that uh, the student has the IEP does not mean that he or she would test digitally. If the information in the school's plan, such as the IEP, indicates that student does not take, um, uh, takes all assessments, paper, pencil, and that information is provided there, that's the information that um, you're submitting. Remember for CT uh, SAT school day, you're not actually submitting documentation to us. So there will be some scenarios where um, I will then follow up with CSDE just to get more information from the school. But if this information, you know, we will just need to have a better understanding of what's being requested because again, no documentation in most cases would be provided uh, or required for the purposes of students taking uh, the CT SAT uh, digital assessment. And anytime we have requests that would um, may need some specifications to understand what's going on, I will then follow up with um, CSD, particularly uh, Deirdre Deshawn. Thanks. And there were a couple of these questions that were actually answered in the in the chat, but uh, someone asked about AP. It's not digital. That was just a temporary thing because of the pandemic and it's paper and pencil this year. So um, the final date for accommodations that need to be inputted. I think we're still working on those days, but I would say it's probably going to be similar to the dates that we had last year, which is like the beginning of February or mid-February or something. Does that sound right, Keisha and, De and Deirdre? Uh, yeah, I think it's beginning of February. It, yeah, we'll, we'll have the specifics. You'll be getting those specific dates in a couple of weeks, but, um, but yeah, I think that's the timing. Okay, then here's a, a question that we have not, I guess, really gotten into, but it's a big one says for AP exams, the extended time students that were in SSD platform automatically had their time accommodations when they logged in. Will this be the case for SSD for SAT or will we have to manually put in the accommodations for all SSD students? So you will need to say so you will need to set in tide the settings for um, the settings for uh, your, your students that require accommodations. Um, so you'll need to set do they need 50 uh, 50 percent or your time and a half? They need double time. Um, if they have something like a, if they need a color contrast, what color do they need? So you need to kind of set those things. Um, the 
digital the, the platform that was used for the digital AP uh, that you guys may have used last year or the, or the year before, um, that platform is different than the Cambium assessments platform. So, uh, so your experience in that platform is a little bit different. Um, but in uh, in in Tide for for the SAT, you will need to set those uh, those uh, settings for students that require accommodation. Okay, there was a question about preferred name in the digital test option. Um, I would need to look into that. I mean, I know what you're talking about, Seth, but if there was an issue with it, I don't know if that came up in NGSS as well, but. Okay, so there was a question about PSAT 8-9. Maybe um, Keisha could follow up on that one. Are the Saturday SATs paper, pencil, or digital? There, and Saturday. Keisha answered that. That's paper, pencil. Okay, I don't. There's some specific questions about accommodations. When what is no evidence of need for paper pencil as NGSS is administered after SAT in eleventh grade? I, I really was Michelle. I was just going to speak to this. I will provide a response in the chat box. But my recommendation is the best way to view the the digital platform for the Connecticut SAT school day is parallel to the digital administration for the next generation science standards. So the expectation is that all of our students, all of our 11th graders that qualify to take the standard summative assessment will take the SAT online. If, however, you have a student that whose access needs cannot be met through the universal tools and or accommodations provided through the digital platform, then you can request to have your student access the assessment paper pencil. And there is a specific process for doing that. And information is provided through the college board on how to order those test materials. But as far as um, giving kids options to how they take or complete the SAT, our rec really the process is that all students will be taking this digitally unless there are access needs that can't be met. Thanks. And there was a couple of questions about PSAT 8-9. Could they still go digital if they wanted to change that. Um, Adrian, who do you suggest they contact today, about that? Today is the, today, since today is the ordering deadline, uh, I think you might be able to go in and change that um, in in TOS. Um, if not, you're going to want to call the the customer service line to uh, to see if you can make that change. I'm not 100% sure. I think you may be able to. But like I said, today is the ordering deadline, so you're going to have to make that choice quickly. Great. We're at time, everyone. And um, for any questions we didn't answer, like I said, send me an email or we can see the chat and we can follow up with you. Um, so this is this will be the first in like a bunch of trainings that we have or Q&A sessions just because we want to make sure we have everybody um, understanding the shift and all of that. So um, thank you again for taking the time to um, attend today. And um, on behalf of all of us, um, I hope that you are all doing well, and thanks for the work that you're doing on behalf of your students and families. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.